It's gonna count me in. <laughs> Get up, put a smile on your face Because today is gonna be your day I feel it, I feel it in my spirit everybody god bless you this is bishop neil roberson and welcome to the church of the harvest international it's a good day today we give praises unto god for his mercies brand new every day god is good all the time and i like to tell you all the time god is good hey as you come in the room today i want you to push that share button i want you to share and invite somebody to come in and share with us on today, this is the day. I'm telling you, it's a wonderful day today. I am excited about the Lord Jesus. I hope you're excited too. God has something powerful for you today. Now listen, as you come in the room today, I want you to share. I want you to invite. I said share and invite with your friend, with your brother uh, on this wonderful day. Man, this is the second Sunday in May. And i tell you something. Time is on the second Sunday in June. I'm a month behind. Uh, it's the second Sunday in June, or rather the first Sunday in June, and time is moving right along. I tell you something, first Sunday in June, y'all give me, y'all gotta pray for me. I got my dates and times <laughs> all mixed and messed up. Well, this is the first Sunday in June, and I'm enjoying the Lord. You know, I said first Sunday in June because last Sunday was May 31st, and it felt like the first Sunday. And so this is the first Sunday in June, and I want to say happy June to all of y'all. We're headed into the summer, and I tell you something, this is a beautiful day outside. And I want you to call somebody, call a friend, invite somebody. That's right, push that share button as you come in the room, and let's enjoy the Lord together. To all of the saints of God everywhere that's coming in, I see you coming in. Take a moment. Good morning to you, Brother Rodney and and uh, and Sharina, and my God, uh, all the saints of God, Montoya, they're all coming in the room, and we say good morning to everybody. God bless all of you. Listen, let's have a good time. Helen Flowers, God bless you. Praying for you, Pastor Sean and Elder Lester. Everybody that's coming in the room, y'all come on in and press that share button. Let's have some worship, and let's have a good time. As you see, I got the music going already. I'm ready to have a little church. Come on. Y'all come on in with me. Everybody, come on, and let's have a good time. I'm 
out of your seat. Come on. Get out of your seat. Get on your feet. Come on. Get on your feet. Can you feel it? Jesus, y'all, 
Y'all kind of, uh, I don't see no hearts. Or can y'all give a brother a heart or something on the screen? Can y'all show some love to a brother? Because I feel good in my sanctified soul. It's a brand new day. And uh, when we start thinking about how good God has really been to us, something ought to break, break loose inside of us. You hear me? I said something ought to break loose inside of us and uh, make you want to give God a good praise. Yeah, come on. Come on.
Well, praise the Lord. I want you to turn your Bibles today, you know. I'm saying God bless you, everybody. I'm thank you for joining. Call all the people, bring them in. Bring them in. Thank God for Jesus. Bring them in. Thank you. Welcome to the cyber sanctuary of the church. Come over here and say hello to the people. So real. Come over here. Praise God. All right. Come over here and wave at everybody. This is my granddaughter. And I want her to say hello. Wave at the people, tell people hi. Say something. Say hello to everybody. Go ahead and say hello. Hi. Say good morning to the saints. I should have to this ain't no uh, this ain't no Easter speech. This is a greet to people. Hi, good morning. That's all you got to say. I don't know what else to say. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Thank God for I don't know. Uh, she's, she's ready to go to high school. And uh, she's a four point student. Uh, straight A's and one B. And and she's in, she likes to come to, to stay with her papa and her nanny. And Montoya said, Come on, Surreal. She said, Come on, Surreal. You know, you know what to do, she says. And so, I greet you, I, I admonish all of you to raise your children up, grandchildren up in the fear and admiration of Christ, to know the Lord for themselves. We live in an age, a generation where there's crime everywhere and, and, I'm, and, and we're, not, we're not taking on the position as the victim. But we have the victory. I said, we, we have the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's what we have. We have the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In all things, we have the victory. In all things, we have the victory. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We're most certainly praying for Mr. George Floyd's family. We're praying for them that they would uh, be blessed as a result of this tragedy that they've gone through. We're praying for their lives and their, and their families. You know, bereavement is not is not an easy thing. And especially when your child or so died at the hands of violence. Now let me tell you something. I don't care what anyone does. I don't care if you've been in prison 20 times. I don't care if you've I don't care what you've done wrong. The truth of the matter is no one deserves to die like that. No, no, you know, you, I can't, I can't talk about how a person lives their life, but I know that you shouldn't die at the hands of another man's knee around your neck or or hands around your throat or any kind of victimization. You shouldn't have to live through that. I do know that much, and so I'm praying for that family because I got sons, Jermaine, Justin, and Mike, and uh, Junior, and Jr., AJ, and and, and, and I got so many A's and T's and J's around here. I got my little grandson I call Brick because his head big. And I got the new little baby, Jeremiah. And and uh, and then I got um, Tony and all my um, sons and grandsons here. Then I got my extended grandchildren, Kaysen and, and Christian and all of those boys, Josiah and all of those, all my sons. And so anything were to happen to any of my boys and, then, and forgive me if I didn't call all their names I got so many of them I, sometimes I don't know my name sometimes when I walk up on some of my ex my wife I said what's that grandchild name right there what his name is because I don't remember all their names yeah, it's just a bunch of them they all be hey papa papa I'm like I need it tomorrow I said, baby what's that grandchild name right there and uh, but God knows I love them all and I'm praying for all of them and I'm praying for your children um, uh, today, and I'm praying for your daughters. And uh, I had an opportunity yesterday, and I went to the Word of God. Had an opportunity yesterday to attend a, a high school graduation of a young man, uh, three houses up the street from us in our neighborhood, an African American young man and an African American young lady. The young man uh, graduated with honors, and I got a full ride scholarship to Wayne State, where he's going to play football there. Got a football scholarship where he's going to be playing there in Wayne State, and uh, the young, young young lady got a full ride scholarship where she's going to be a biology major, chemical biology or chemistry, chemical biology major. They both were smart, smart African American young people, and because they cannot have a formal graduation, 
the parents went to each house in the community, white and black and other, <clears throat> and passed out flyers asking us if we would come to the edge of the curve and put lawn chairs and stuff at the edge of the curve as they walked down the street. And we gave them a graduation. <clears throat> we gave them monetary gifts and I gave out my CDs to them, uh, my new CD, Shout. Uh, hey, they're going to have to have some church in this day. In today's time, they're going to be some gospel music to help them along the way. Because when you get in trouble, stomp. My Kirk friend ain't going to get you through. You're going to need in a song singing about God's amazing grace to get you through in these seasons. Those are good songs. But they ain't going to help you when trouble comes. You need a song that says, restore me, Lord. I need to be restored. And so we had a big graduation ceremony up and down the block. And when I tell you, it was a wonderful, wonderful celebration for those young people as we stood there and talked for a while. It was a wonderful time as I shared with them. My wife and I and Soraya shared with them in the community. It was wonderful on yesterday. And so I congratulate all of the graduates in our, in our church. I know Kristen's graduating and Jalen is graduating. Another one of my sons is graduating and there are others. Soraya graduated and D graduated. He graduated from kindergarten to first grade. And Amaya graduated and uh, anybody else? Maya. Maya graduated. Thank God for Maya. And all of them going to high school. So we thank God we got these young teenage adults that are going into school. I told him in an interview the other day, I said, I've been black three times as a man in my life. I was a black baby, I was a black boy, and now I'm a black man. So if anybody can tell you anything about being an African-American black man, Neil Robinson can tell you. This year I'll be 55 years old, and I think I know a little bit about being black, and a little, about, a little bit about living in this society, and how I've sustained as long as I've, I have. It's not been because I'm so smart. It's just that I know when to talk and I know when to be quiet. And I know when some, so you have to choose your arguments carefully, choose your fights carefully. Some fights you don't fight, some fights you just wait and let God fight for you. Then there's some things you have to fight in the name of Jesus. I want you to go to the scriptures when we go to Acts chapter number nine is where I'm going. I'm only gonna be a few minutes today. I'm already over my time. Acts chapter nine. Acts chapter 9, and we're in verse number 1. Acts, the book of the apostle, Acts chapter number 9, and I'm at verse number 1. I'm going to share some. Don't, 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 don't check out on me, if you would, please. I want to say thank God for all of our cyber church. Thank God for all of our elders and ministers and deacons. Uh, I hope Deacon Whitlow got what he needed. He was trying to call me while I was in service. And so um, I, hope somebody, I hope somebody called him and took care of that for me. Um, so the, um, um, all of our cyber, would you do me a favor? And would you thank God, put some hearts up for all our cyber members, our yeah. members from around the world, a part of our cyber church. We thank God for them, our cyber members that are streaming in from around the country. We thank God for them in and out of the United States. Welcome to your morning service during our cyber sanctuary, in our cyber sanctuary. Thank God for all of you. I greet you in Jesus' love and the word shalom. I speak God's peace over your life today. Acts chapter number nine, and we're going through verse number one through six. Here's what verse number one says. And Saul, yet breathing out threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, that's what he says, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. Watch this. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a sound saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? He said, and that Saul, he said, 
Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Listen carefully. Verse 6. Verse 6. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. I want to um, read this from uh, another version of the scripture, and I want to go to the living translation of the Bible and see if we can get a little more clarity out of this for the new saints. That's Acts chapter 9, verse number 1. Perhaps there may be some new converts that are in the house that didn't understand the lingo or the language of the King James Version of the Bible. Let's see if we can bring some clarity and clear the speech up some for those that are watching that are um, uh, new Christians. We welcome you to the body of Christ. Here's what the Living Translation says in the, the book of Acts, chapter number nine, the Living Translation says, Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any follower of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them both men and women back to Jerusalem in chains. Verse 3, and the reason why he says in verse number 2 that he wanted to arrest any followers of the way is because they were not called Christians in the first century church. They were not called saints of the most high God. They were called saints. That was in the next century. But this century, they were called people of the way. That, that's how they were described. Those are the people of the way. Of what way? The way of holiness, the way of the way of righteousness. They were followers of Jesus. So they were called people of the way. And Paul is saying, when I go down in Damascus, if I find anybody preaching about Jesus, that's a part of the way. So he had conspired with the synagogues. That's right, the church. He collaborated with the church that if anybody was down there preaching about Jesus at the church, that he can come in and arrest them and take them to jail. Verse 3 says, and he was approaching, <clears throat> coming near Damascus on this mission. All of a sudden, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? In other words, he said to Paul, Paul, why are you doing me like this? Or Saul, rather, because his name hasn't been changed yet. He said, Saul, why are you doing me like this? The Bible says, verse 5, Saul replies back to this voice, Who are you, Lord? Saul asked, and the voice replied, I'm Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. I'm going to read one more verse for the sake of clarity, because in verse 7 it says, The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Huh? They heard a voice. But they didn't see nobody. My, my, my. That's a frightening thing here. here. Here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk for a few minutes about how to know the will of God. How to know God's will. There are a lot of people that are believers and, and saved and genuinely love the Lord. Genuinely. I'm talking about have a genuine love for the Lord Jesus Christ. But the truth of the matter is, they don't know the will of God for their life. They have no idea 
what they are sent or called to do. They don't even know how to hear from God. If God was standing in front of them talking, they wouldn't even know it's him. And they've been saved 20 years, 30 years, and still do not know the will of God. That's why people so eager and quickly to jump up and say, I think it's time for me to move up. The Lord telling me my time is up here. Huh? You just got here. Yeah, but God told me my time is up. Well, I most certainly can't tell you whether to go or stay, but by me having a relationship with God and then coming in a relationship with God, I know God don't swing people in and out of churches like that. No, it don't work like that. God ain't, God ain't no God, uh, especially when your time up statement has everything to do with what you didn't like what the pastor said. Because here's the truth. People don't leave churches. People leave leaders. They don't leave churches. They leave preachers. I don't like what he said. I'm going to find me another preacher. Then you get over there and you don't like what he said. Then you find you another preacher. And forever, by the time you die, we don't know where to bury or what church to take you to because you'd have been a member of every church in town. And it's simply because you really don't know the will of God for one's life. Listen to me carefully. Now, this message is going to be good. I'm not going to be long. As my brother Sam was saying, you got to be long to be strong. But I do need to get this out to you. If you were to have a face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord Jesus, and you could ask him any question you wanted, what would that question truly be? Well, if it was me, I suppose um, you or I would have to think long and hard about what we want to ask him, being that we've finally come face to face with him. I'm guessing that many of you uh, in having this conversation with God will be asking him, Lord, um, what would you have me to do? I think that would be a logical question, being that you're 60 years old and you still don't know what God wants you to do. You ought to be you know, switched jobs full time. Last week you was a mechanic. The month before that you worked at the dry cleaners. Uh, two months before that you worked at the car wash. And before that you worked at the plant. And then two years ago you was a nurse's aide. You worked in the kitchen. You don't know what God wants you to do. You don't have no idea what you want to do. And ain't nobody got to be having 17 or 7 W 2 forms come to your house at the end of the year. This time you to file your taxes. You got to wait for all the nine W 2s to come. Don't you know that's a sign of instability? That's a sign of being unstable. That's being indecisive. Come on now, it's going to be tight, but it's going to really bless you on today. Listen to me carefully. One of the things that you would ask, or I would ask the Lord is, what would you really have me to do? I need to know the will of God concerning me. Well, that experience did happen to the man in the text today. He came face to face with God and he asked the very question that I just implied to you. He also received a response from the Lord. He asked the question and he got a response from it. Okay, watch this. In this particular passage, Paul asked two very important questions. Uh, questions uh, to which we need to be sure to be answered for us in our life. Those questions are, number one, who are you? He asked the Lord Jesus. A, a question that need to be asked. And don't y'all shut me out. Talk about it this time. I mean, now I say it up all night, get this message ready for you so it can bless you. Number one question he asked, he says, who are you? That's a good question. Who are you? This is the single most important question in all of life. Who are you, Jesus? Who is Jesus Christ to you? That's a question that needs to be asked, and it needs to be asked. If I were to ask you, who is Jesus to you, what would you answer me? You ask him, who are you? Come on now. Who is Jesus Christ to you? Well, your answer determines where you will spend your eternity. Oh, God. Yeah, oh, holy roll the bishop back at it again. The question says, based on how you answer it, where you will spend eternity. Now, you can make it sound souped up and spiritual. God does not judge a man on their outward appearance. He judges his heart. So you can give us one of those um, uh, one of those uh, Christian um, 
uh, religious rhetoric answers, if you want to, one of those souped up answers, one of those uh, popping circumstance kind of answers to try to bewilder us. But the truth of the matter is, God got the record. And he knows the truth about who he is to you and who you are to him. Because I'm convinced today that the way you say you know him, the way we say we know him, uh, that he don't know us like we said we know him. You know, and, and here it is. Watch this. The second question he said is, Lord, what would thou have me to do? Number one, Lord, who are you? Number two, what you want me to do? Yeah, yeah. I need to clear something up. When the Bible in Acts chapter 9, when Saul says, who art thou, Lord? He's not saying Lord because he know him as Lord. He's saying Lord because obviously the power that has possessed him at this point and knocked him off his beast to the ground was stronger than he was. And thus he implied to him, who art thou, Lord? Come on now. Yes, who art thou, Lord? Come on now. Um, um, uh, God will, and he'll answer you if you ask these questions. Because watch this. Um, God's will and his will alone should be the heart's desire for every child of God. God's will should be number uno on your schedule. Oh yeah. Um, uh, here it is. He, he would be told what to do. God did not hide his will from Paul or Saul. And he will not hide his will from you. So this morning I am uh, I'm going to preach about this for just about 15 more minutes. Allow me, and I'll let you out of the Cypress Sanctuary. Um, this morning, I'm going to preach about this because you and I need to know how to know the will of God for our lives. Before you can know God's will, watch this, for your life, you must have an understanding of how his will operates. I'm talking slow because I want you to get this. Before you can know the will of God for your life, you got to know how the will operates. There are three ways in which we may understand the will of God. Number one, there is God's sovereign will. Thank you, Jesus. There's God's sovereign will. Number one, there's God's sovereign will. What is this sovereign will? This is a decision of God that is always carried out. Nothing in the universe is ever able to stop it. God is God, and he accomplished what he wishes. Watch this. God's sovereign will is mysterious. Watch this. And is known only to God. It's called God's sovereign will. My, my, my. Look at it. God's sovereign will is the decision that God carries out by himself. It's a sovereign will that God carries out by himself. Nothing in the entire universe, not karma, that foolishness, not no karma and all this other stuff. No, you can't pray against God's sovereign will. Uh, God's sovereign will, nothing in the universe is able to stop his sovereign will. Glory to God. God is God and he accomplished what he wishes, God's sovereign will, is mysterious and is known only to God. Nobody knows the day in which he's going to return. Nobody. That's his sovereign will. Nobody can pop in and, and prophesy he coming back. You don't know the day of the time. You know the season, but you don't know the day of the time because it's God's sovereign will. Come on now. And then that's so first number one, God's sovereign will. Number two, it's God's moral will. Come on, help me, help me now. Y'all come on, get this with me. We're in class. Listen at this. There is God's moral will. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's moral will. I wish some of us had moral wills. Glory, hallelujah. Watch this. So, what is God's moral will? Well, this too is forever settled in his, or rather, uh, forever settled and is unchanging. Here it is. Some things are right and some things are wrong. 
It matters not what society says. This moral will is revealed in the word of God and the consent or, or the conscience of man. Let me say it again. God's moral will is forever settled and is unchanging. Some things are right and then some things are wrong. It matters not what society says. The moral, this moral will is revealed in the word of God and the conscience of man. Okay, here it is. Here's your example. Here's your example. Homosexuality is morally wrong. Lesbianism is morally wrong. Abortion is morally wrong. Racism is morally wrong. Putting your knee on a man's neck, killing him, is morally wrong. That is settled in God's moral will. You cannot change it. <clears throat> I don't care about how the times change. and I don't care about how laws change. The Bible says everything that is lawful is not expedient. You better hear what I'm saying to you. The scripture says everything that is lawful is not expedient. So although the law passed the marijuana bill that you can smoke weed, it is not right. <laughs> oh, I know y'all don't like that. Glory, hallelujah. But it's legal now. I got a paper from the doctor. Yeah, but you, the paper, the paper from the main doctor said that's wrong. Show me the Bible where that's wrong. Well, it's called intoxication. Or not, when the Bible says be sober minded, anything that causes your mind to not, I ain't drunk, be quiet. This is not what I'm saying to you. Anything that alters your thinking, alters your level of operation, becomes wrong. Morally wrong. All right, here we go. So you got God's sovereign will, then you got God's moral will. And then number three, you have God's particular will. God's particular will. What is that? Well, he has a will that is particular and peculiar to your life. Yeah. Oh, this is good. God has a particular will that is uh, peculiar to your life. In other words, it's, car it's, it's catered or carved out uh, just for you. It won't fit anybody else. That's why it behooves you to be you. Uh, God's particular will. Yes, Here it is. In Acts chapter 9, verse 15, this particular will will vary from saint to saint. All right, you think I'm lying to Here it is. Look at Acts chapter 9 and verse number 15. In Acts chapter 9 and verse 15, it says this. But the Lord said, go. For Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel. That was a, a will that was specifically for Paul and Paul alone. Everybody can't go to the king. Everybody can't go to the palace. Everybody can't go to the White House. I know some brothers that saved and take the five feet with the Holy Ghost. And love Jesus, but you better not take them to that White House because you ain't gonna understand what they're saying. It ain't a great law, the president. Look, we are from the uh, uh, I go to the Mount Eden Baptist Church, and and, and brother, I did I, 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 I think that thing is, is right. Now, the man means well, but um, he need a representative to speak for him. I ain't talking about nobody, I'm just saying what I'm saying. If you cannot articulate. There are some places, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I don't want to offend anybody. Just listen at me, listen at me carefully. God's will, God's particular will varies from saint to saint, from person to person. You got to be able to handle certain platforms. Don't mean that, you know, you know, that you can't, oh, help me, Jesus. God has a particular will. Let me leave it right there. So I can see all three aspects of the will of God and work in my life. So it was his sovereign will that set his love upon me and saved me. It was sovereign. It was in stone. He was going to save me already. He already had me on his mind. 
He already had me locked in. I'm going to save Neil. That was his sovereign will. It was his moral will that I stopped cursing, drinking, getting high. That was settled. That's in God's moral will, etc. Everything you can think of that's moralistically wrong was settled in the heavens with God. Number three, it, is, it was and is his particular will for my life that I become a preacher of the gospel. He called me to preach. He didn't call my grandson to preach yet. He didn't call my cousin to preach or one of my other sisters, Pumpkin. He didn't call her to preach. This was set for my life. Now, I can't go start a generation of preachers tell my son, hey, but you got to take over for me. I can't give him that responsibility. So I want you to follow in my footsteps. What? You sound like an idiot. You cannot impose God's will for your life onto your child life. I had to learn that. Now, my sons are preachers. Yes, they are preachers. Yeah, they're preachers. And so I do expect them to step up to the plate to become the best preacher they can be and possibly become a great pastor and take my step to sit in my seat one day. Why? Because they said they're preachers. And they said God called them. So what we have to do is depict what God's particular will for them is and then try to walk that out. Glory, hallelujah. And sometimes that causes you to choose what you're going to do. Either you're going to be a, 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 a Christian all the time well, you're going to be a Christian sometime. But at any rate, if God call you to preach, he call you to be a preacher all the time. So he can't look like no preacher today and don't be no preacher tomorrow. Well, I'm just, I'm just relaxing. I'm, I'm being me today. I'm being me today. You is a preacher, you said. Oh, let me get off of that right there because y'all don't like that kind of yes, preaching because I'm depicting wills. I'm talking about God's will for your life. And y'all ain't like what I'm saying to you. But you're going to get over it. Come on, stay with me here. Watch what I'm saying to you. Even though you and I are such a small part of God's vast creation and our lives seem very insignificant, you've got to understand that God know you. <laughs> Woo! In spite of the billions of people that are on the earth, and I know you think because um, you just want to die. I know you think that um, you, you, you're worthless to God. But let me tell you something, baby. You better hear me good. You are significant uh, to the army of the Lord. You are significant to the plan and the will of God. If you are not where you need to be at in the puzzle, then there is something missing from what God has designed to do. You are important. Now listen to Bishop Robeson. Listen to me, saints. Listen to me, all of you. Come on, Jackie and, and everybody. Listen to me. You are important when it comes to God's will for the kingdom. That's why we can't disappear and go off and do our own thing. That's why you got to check in. That's why it's called accountability. You got to check in because you have a place in the kingdom that nobody can take that place except you. It's part of God's particular and moral will for your life. Listen at me now. Bitch, you can't tell me what to do. Hush and do what I'm telling you to do. In the words of Gator, hush and eat. Listen. There is a particular will that God has for your life, Deborah. There's a particular will that God has for your life, Eastock. There's a particular will that God has for your life, Whitmore. There is a particular will that God has for your life. Glory, hallelujah. You got to get this. You are not insignificant if you ain't got a mic in your hand. My, 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 my. Y'all better stay with me because I'm talking good. Listen at me. Listen at me. He has designed a particular plan for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts that I have for you. The plan that I have for you. Come on. It is not evil but good to bring you to an expected end. God's got a particular plan for you. That's why you just can't go out there and get you a man. You got to wait on God to send you the one that he carved out for you. That's why you got nine wives. You got to stop choosing. Let God choose for you. 
Hey, my, my, my. Listen at me now. He has designed a particular plan for your life. He has promised to reveal it to you and then guide you into it. Oh my God, I'm preaching so good. I'm preaching so good. Listen, but before we get into how to know his will, I'm almost there to y'all. When we get to how to know his will, let me tell you this. I'm first going to address some of the myths concerning the will of God. There's so many lies out there by God's will. Let me give you some of these myths. Here they go. Here we go. Some of the myths. Get ready. And you might end up laughing, but let me give you some of them. Let's dispel some of these myths. Let's dispel it. Y'all ready? Let's dispel this. Let me see some hearts. I ain't going to stop to y'all. Hit some hearts. Because y'all got up and went to cooking and doing stuff. You at church service. You sit down in the service. Some of y'all got, what's that, ADHD? What's it? ADHD, your attention, they got attention, attention deficit disorder. You can't sit still long enough. You just got to get up and move. Sit down and get this word. Come on now. Got attention deficit. Come on. Come on. Hit them hearts. Hit the heart. Give me a heart. You want this? Come on. I'm not playing with y'all. Y'all can get this now. Glory to God. We're building a, we're building a healthy church. We didn't just renovate our church to have a cute church, but I want the lives of the people to resemble the work that we do. I want the lives to resemble perfection. And listen, listen to me, we got one of the most beautiful churches you've ever seen. When you get back in that thing, it's something else. Woo -hey. My God. But what good is having a beautiful church and uh, an airhead? What good is having a beautiful sanctuary and people who ain't even learned how to give yet? People ain't even learned how to talk to each other yet. Don't make no good about all that. Got all that equipment and beautiful sanctuary and laid out places. Boy, our church is nine. It's nine. It's nine. And you don't even know the will of God for your life in this nice church. Because what's going to happen is you have a nice church, and because you don't know God's will, that's going to get old to you. Because stuff that's new gets old. <laughs> Unless God renew your mind, everything new will get old. I've been married to my wife 39 years, and that girl looked new to me every day. Why? Because I've been my mind. I know I get on her nerves sometimes, but she gets on mine too. Oh, you know, yes, she do. She gets right on the last one. But we pray and we renew our mind, and uh, and uh, and uh, and we love one another. It's renewed every day. You renew your mind. You got to renew your mind. And God's word, this word should be a renewing word to renew your mind. Hallelujah. Here it is. Let's dispel some of these myths. Myth number one. God will give you a road map. <laughs> God will give you a road map. Let me tell you something. God does not give road maps. He gives relationships. As you follow him, he will reveal his will unto you. Just like he did Israel. As you follow him, he will reveal to you his plan. Oh, I'm making that up, right? In Exodus chapter 13, uh, verse number 21, he gave them a pillar of cloud by day right. and a pillar of fire by night. Yes, he will give you directions. He will send you signs, directions for you to follow. Now, he don't, you don't roll map. There ain't no roadmap. God reveals his will unto you. He knows how to give you revelation. And that word reveal comes from the word revelation. God will give you a revelation. I saw the church finish before it got done. I saw everything that's happening in our church. I already saw it. Like for some of the saints of God right now, Y'all can't wait till you get back in the church. I done already saw us in there already. I'm already back in there. Some of you all can't wait to get back in. I'm already back in. I'm already back in the church having church. I ain't seen you down the path to having church. Come on. Wait, wake, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up. I'm talking about in the spirit realm. I've already seen us back in there. I've already seen every chair full. I've already seen people healed and delivered. I've already seen newcomers coming. I've already saw it. I've already been there. 
in the realm of the spirit because God will reveal to you what he's doing and what he's already done. Come on now. The Bible said, I have not seen, nor ear have heard, nor have it entered into the hearts of men what good thing God has for them. Watch this. The next verse says, except he revealed it. So that don't end up talking about God, you, you got to wait on it. No, God will give you a revelation based on your relationship with him. Based on your relationship with God, God will give you revelation about what he wants you to do next. God will tell you, don't buy that house. Who's going to buy church? <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Who's working out the details? Took the whole thing, took the whole church over there. They was cutting price and dropping price. God knows I'm going to put my name on a dotted line and get to church. And the pandemic hit and God says, no, wrong move. Don't, don't do that. Now I could be stand up and pray and tell me, well, we just decided. No, heck no, we ain't decided nothing. We was going to do it. I was going to do it. God gave revelation. God gave me a supernatural revelation of what not to do and what to do. Hey, glory, hallelujah. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Oh, God, look at your robot. Number two, dispel that myth. Number two, dispel the myth that God doesn't want you to have any fun. You get rid of that myth. Bible says, I come that you might have life and have that more abundantly. You dispel the myth that God don't want you to have no fun. Huh? Some see God as a cosmic killjoy. That is, if you surrender to do his will, you will have a hard and an unhappy life. And so many are afraid to find his will because they're afraid uh, of what they might be asked to do. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you put yourself in the place of God, how do you treat your children? I mean, I mean, ain't God better to you than you are to your children? Well, what would make you think? What would make you think that God don't want you to have a good time? Don't you want your children to have a good time? Don't you want your children to be blessed? Don't you want your children? I watched yesterday when, uh, 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 Deacon uh, Don had his little baby boy out there on a the boat with a light jacket on with a fishing pole catching fish. The little boy was out there that having fun. And if you think Brother Anthony wants his son to have fun, how much more fun do you think God wants you and your child to have? God wants all of us to have a good time. I didn't get saved to be bored and dry. I'm not dried out and bored. And if I had to be dried on board, I'm just going to be honest with you. I, 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 I guess I won't be no Christian. If I got to be dried, bored, and dead, I won't be no Christian. I was the life of the party before I got saved. And I'm the life of the party now. Come on now. I'm known around the world for making people laugh and having a good time. I don't have a good time in the place of being a man. I'm a man. I take care of my business. I take care of my business. But I have a good time too. Who told you God don't want you to have a good time? You dispel that myth. God does want you to have a good time. God wants you to be happy and have joy. Number three, you dispel the myth that God only speaks to certain few holy people. Like God's will is limited. Are you crazy? Like God only talks to certain people. God talks to whoever lined up. Whoever lined up and built a relationship with him is the one God talked to. He can't talk to people who ain't in no relationship with him. You hear me? I see God don't just start talking to people. You got to build a relationship with him. That's how you have uh, a, a close, intimate conversations. There's certain things that, you know, as much as Rodney Jones get on my nerves, there's certain things that I can tell Rodney that. And I'm going to tell you the truth. But that's because of relationship. That's relationship. 
That's covenant relationship. When you're in covenant relationship, I tell people all the time, teeth and tongue fall out. But when it's time to eat, they get back together again. Come on now. Y'all know I'm talking better than y'all saying amen. Y'all know it. Y'all some haters. Come on now. You got to understand something now. You got to understand. You got to dispel the myth that God only talks to certain people. No, that ain't true. Or God only talks to those uh, uh, God uh, will is not limited. I want you to know that God's will, that's what I was trying to say. God's will is not limited to those with position. He just doesn't speak to the Pauls of this world or the Spurgeons of this world or to the Grahams of this world. He has a will for every saint and every conceivable level of commitment. You listen at me. If you choose to follow him, if you choose to follow in his will, come on, you will be led to a holier lifestyle. Yeah, I like that. I want to say that slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but, conjunction contrast, he calls us where we are. God can't call you for not from another place. He can't call me if I'm trying to be T.D. Jakes. He can only call Neil to be Neil. So you got to be honest about who you are and where you are. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I hear you talking. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. The fourth thing I want you to dispel is this. You got to get rid of this. You have to wait on a Damascus Road experience like Saul experienced before you can know God's will. The devil is a lie. You got to wait for nothing to knock you down. Why would you wait for something to knock you down to get in a certain place with God? Don't do that. That's certainly, that was very dramatic. It sounds like a Some of us look at other people's testimony and say, oh, I wish I had that testimony. He got such a good testimony. You don't want the testimony I had. Smoking weed and smoking cocaine and you don't want that testimony. Why would you want that? Well, I just never did not, I never did not like that. I never drank, never. That's a testimony. <laughs> in the world in which we live, you never drank, you never got high, you, you, you're still a virgin. That's a testimony. Because us, we were nasty and drunk and high and shucks. We can't say what the first time we had sex, though. We was, we was. Came out the womb next. God had to save us. God said, let me hurry up and save this boy. And a lot of y'all too, y'all looking at me, a lot of y'all too, y'all know y'all, God had to save you right away because you had some things on your mind. You done did some stuff you can't never let your husband or wife know you did. Come on, tell the truth, shame the devil. You done did some stuff that if you got out, <laughs> you ought to thank God I don't look like what I've gone through. Thank God I, I, <laughs> I don't feel like the mess I've gone through. You ought to lift your hands and tell God, thank you that he spared you and saved you even in your foolishness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So listen, dispel the myth. Get rid of that myth. God only speaks to certain people. You got to have a Damascus Road experience. Uh, the earth got to quake and shake up something and then God will talk to you. Here's the next one. Dispel this myth. Dispel this myth. God only reveals his will to the young. God calls people of all ages. That's what you need to know. God don't just give his will to young people. He gives it to everybody uh, uh, that connects with him. He never stops using the saints. If he were finished with you, he would have called you home. That's when you know he finished with you. When you check out. Oh, he died all of a sudden. God was through with him. Oh, man, that was un untimely death. Ain't nothing God do untimely. <laughs> I know it's hard for you to wrap your mind around that. I know it's hard. I know it's hard for you to believe that. I know it's hard for you to believe. Well, he sh she shouldn't have died so early. Nobody has the power. The Bible says the power of life and death is in your tongue. That's what you say. But God holds life in his hand. You hear me? Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Bishop Bolton always tells the testimony about when he had the triple bowel surgery, and he talks about how they took his heart out of his chest and laid it up on the table, hooked it up to something, and he was on the table with no heart in his chest. And they were doing repairing arteries and things like that. He said the doctor told him that he was on that table for an hour or so with no heart in his chest. He said he came out of there and he asked God, he said, God, how is it that I was able to still be alive, laying on the table with no heart in my chest? He says, the Lord replied to him and told him, says, they had your heart in their hand. He said, but I had your life in my hands. You listen at me. You better believe that the doctors can do surgery and things on your on your heart and your, and your lungs and things like that. But at the end of the day, you better know that God got your life in his hand. And he's the only one that can give and take life. Did you, did you hear what I said? He is the only one that can give and take life. You dispel the myth. Get rid of it. Here's the last thing. Get rid of the myth that says God's will is hidden from us. And we have to find it for ourselves. That is not true. God's will is hid from us. What well, good sense does it make to have a will if I can't go, if I don't know where it is? Listen at me. Here it is, right here. Here it is. The, the absurdity, or rather the absurdity, I'm sorry, of a father hiding his will from his son, God never hides his will. He reveals it. He wants you to know his will so you can get about doing what he called you to do. I'm almost there. I'm almost done. Give me five more minutes. He gives you his will so you can start doing what he called you to do. This is not a cosmic Easter hunt. But God paint the eggs and hide them and you got to go find them. God don't take his will and clean it up real good and hide it somewhere. You got to go on Easter hunt and say, I found his will. I found his will. No. 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 And now that we <clears throat> have discussed these myths concerning the will of God, allow me to tell you this very quickly and share with you for just a couple more minutes of easy steps that will lead you into knowing the will of God for your life. Here it is. Number one, God's guidance and is provisional. God's guidance is provisional. In other words, God's guidance is provisional. In God's will, when he guides you somewhere, he, he includes provision in where he guides you. That's how you know you're walking in God's will. Watch this. This is the same. God expects certain things from us unless we are able to do deliver these characteristics we'll probably remain in the dark concerning his will did you hear what i said i said that god expects certain things from us and unless we're able to deliver these characteristics we'll probably remain in the dark concerning his will what's that what do we expect of us number one being willing to obey him the first will that God wants you to do is to obey what he tells you. All the things that you're arguing with God about, paying your time and, and, and loving people and forgiving people, you would never, listen, you would never walk into the place where you're supposed to walk into if you don't, if you are not willing to, number one, obey God. We make our plans, we set them in motion, and then call God in to bless it. See, to genuinely do his will, we must put our will aside and then be willing to do all that he asks us to do. Not some of it, all of it. And so here's a question. Can you honestly say, whenever he leads you or wherever he leads you, I'll go. Can you really say that? Or... Why should God reveal his will to you when he knows we are going to do what he say do anyway? So he never reveals his will to you because he knows you ain't going to do it. God said, I'm not going to reveal this to someone who I know ain't going to do it. 
I don't know my will. I don't know God's will for my life. You ain't gonna never know God's will for your life if you don't, first of all, become an obedient servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you know, at one point while we were renovating our church, me and Tamron and my wife, we were all just laughing, waiting to see what God was gonna do next. And at one time, we got concerned about some numbers on some stuff, some, some dollar amounts on some things. And uh, I, I called Tamron, Tamron called back, and I said, Tamron, you know what? I'm not even going to worry myself thinking about this because everything that God did, he did it did it already anyway. So why are we going to start worrying about something that God told us to do anyway? She said, oh, Bishop, you are so right. I was thinking the same thing. Let's just forget it. And we forgot about it. Do you know what God did? Paid it. Paid it. Paid it. When you get your tail out of God's way and let God's will be manifested, you will see everything that God says to do be done. Even when your own people won't do it, God has sent somebody else to do it. Did you hear what I said to you? Why? Because of your relationship with God. Come on. Y'all better hear what I'm saying to you right now. Being obedient to God causes God to reveal his will to you. Why should God reveal his will when you know you ain't going to obey? The second thing, display a spirit of meekness. God ain't going to reveal his will to some haughty, prideful person. To walk in God's will, because God is liable to make you a millionaire. And he can't make no prideful person a millionaire, because God knows you already got a, a messed up attitude. Why would he give you that? Oh, no. Oh, no. As my son Jermaine said, oh, no. God ain't going to do that. No. You got to express spirit of meekness. That is, you got to be teachable. Don't you know some people are not teachable? They go to church with me where I'm the pastor and won't even let me teach them. But yet still come every week and sit down and look at me. You got to be teachable if you're going to know God's will. I'm teaching you God's will right now. And some folk don't want to hear what I'm saying right now. Oh my goodness. Lord, help us right now. Why would you follow me in my life displays that I'm walking with God? Why would you follow me in my life displays that he got to be hearing from God with all the stuff he's doing, with all the stuff God is allowing him to do? He got to be here. How in the world this man started church five years ago, paid the church off, remodeled the whole church, debt free. Souls are coming to Christ. How? I tell you how. I'll tell you how. I'll tell you how. Because I got a relationship with the master. And if I don't know nothing else, I know his voice. And in the words of Ray Dunn and Neil Robertson, we ain't just that smart. We ain't that smart. Somebody is smarter than we are. And we are submitting ourselves to that that, that power, that source, El Elyon, the most high God, glory to God. That's where it comes from. You got to display a spirit of meekness. You hear me? The next thing you're going to do is you got to be open to God. That means earnestly, sincerely pray for God's guidance. Then watch this. You got to report for duty. I'm about to drop this mic. I said you got to report for duty. You got to report for duty. <laughs> which is scary stuff. You got to report for duty. Don't wait um, to be drafted. Just show up and ask him if he has an assignment for you. God, what would I have? Don't you know what Paul said? Paul said, who are you? And when God told him who he was, when Jesus told him who he was, next thing he said, what you want me to do? That's how you got to be with God. I was praying during the pandemic. I said, God, now I know there's a pandemic going on. And I know you didn't give me a pandemic to get rest alone. I know you sent me off to get some rest. But can I do that with something? God, what else you want me to do? What you want me to do, God? You go down there and tear that church up. I ain't got no money. He said, I ain't asked you that. You asked me what I want you to do? I just told you. Huh? Hey, my, my, my. You got to show up for work. If God isn't showing you anything, perhaps it is. It is. If God ain't showing you nothing, then perhaps you should examine your life to see 
just how much time you really spend with him in private. If God ain't showing you nothing, then you ought to check and see how much time you're spending with God. Because maybe perhaps you ain't spending no time with him. You ain't got no relationship with him. If God ain't giving you no spiritual assignments to do, boo boo, boo boo. Him don't know you. Because everybody that's in covenant relationship with God, he gives them something to do. And that's why if you ain't got nothing to do, you go put your foot in other stuff. Do do. You all you smearing mess everywhere. Talking about stuff you ain't got a business talking about. All in other folk business. You just doing a bunch of other stuff. That ain't God's assignment for your life. And the reason why you're doing that is because you don't know God's assignment because you're in some other place. You need to hang up the telephone, get off the uh, Facebook, get off the Instagram, and get your black stuff on your knees and have a little talk with Jesus and ask him, what is my responsibility? What would you have me to do? No! My, 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 I feel Jesus. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Y'all sure ain't talking to me. You better hear what I'm saying to you. You got to show up and report for duty. Ask God what you want me to do. Spend some private time. Too often he's speaking, but ain't nobody listening. Huh. Next thing is you got to be yielded to God. Saul in verse 8 and 9 was yielded to God. As soon as he heard, as soon as he had a word from God, he got busy doing it. Again, God probably uh, not revealed his will to someone who isn't going to do anything. Oh, no, anyway, God ain't giving you nothing. Oh, I'm over my time. I'm over my time. I'm over my time. Here the last one is. Here the last one is right here. Hey, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God's guidance is practical. It ain't difficult. This is the last point. God's guidance is practical. It's giving just hard. It's hard. I can't get up. I don't understand all this spirit. Shut up. It ain't deep. It's practical. Do you know what practical means? That means God will reveal his will in ways that will be plain to see and understand. He uses several uh, 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 in the Bible to show us what he's talking about. Number one, uh, he does it through miracles. Saul. Uh, uh, normally, God won't speak to a man uh, like he did Saul. So don't think God will knock you out the car and try to talk to you while you're driving. That probably ain't going to happen. They ain't going to do it like that. Watch this here. Uh, this was a miracle. And occasionally, he would speak uh, in the fashion. But don't wait on it before um, you start serving him. Now, I've had a couple of miraculous experiences, like cancer, and God miraculously healed me from cancer. That was miraculous. I had some amazing things happen. My mom and dad died together. That was some amazing stuff that happened to me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as a young boy, my mom and daddy told me I had a stroke as a young boy. I, I, I had some things that happened to me that were absolutely miraculous. God has done some crazy stuff for me. Woo! I've had some miraculous things happen in my life when God was talking to me through these different things. And then there's other times, number two, he does it through miracles, then he does it through the word. What does that mean? God's word holds the answers to all of life's questions. Sometimes God talks you through the word. You got to get the word and get it. That's it. Then he does it through people. He does it through people. The ones you don't want to talk to. God uses Ananias, ordinary people, to talk. Then finally, last thing, he does it through his spirit. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost, if you don't have God's spirit, ain't talking about the spirit make you no, no, that's overrated. No, 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 no. Ain't talking about that. God, I'm not talking about he does it through you speaking in tongues. No, God does it through his spirit. The spirit of God translates through you. Through you translates. Here it is. The Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit in us. Watch this. John, here's what he says. And he will guide us unto all truth. One of the distinguishing marks of God's sheep is their uh, earmark. Here it is. God speaks to people 
through the Holy Spirit. You got to be aware of listening to voices. God is a God is God. God has a big plan for your life. <clears throat> he has a big plan for your life, and you got to make sure that in this plan for your life, that you don't mess this plan up. Why are you doing a bunch of other stuff? You got to do it. God has a will for your life. And God wants you to know his will. He wants you to know his will. God ain't hiding his will from you. Don't you believe that? God is not hiding his will from you. God is not hiding his will from you. And you got to know he's not hiding his will from you. But you got to get connected with a ministry that will reveal God's will to you. So you know the do's and don'ts of what to do, what not to do. Uh, well, you know, this was, this message kept me up most of the night because I wanted this message to be plain to you so that you would know how to contact God to find out exactly what his will is for your life. It's not hard to find out. As I told you, it starts first with a relationship with God. It starts first with a relationship with God. God will not reveal his will for you, for you to abuse him or take advantage of him. But God gives you his will because he got a plan for you. Here it is, here it is, here it is. When your mother or father pass away, they leave a will. They should leave a will. In that will, from little children, sometimes daddy, when he can, he'll leave enough in the will so you can bury him and have a funeral so it won't be bearing on the mother or bearing on the husband. And so at the end of the day, they read the will. And in the will, it says everything that the father or the mother has left for the family. And what a will is, a will is instructions. Sometimes, as the African-American families, we want to know how much money he leave you. Sometimes it ain't the amount of money they left. It's the instruction that they left. Sometimes it's the wealth of knowledge that he left. Sometimes he gives you an idea rich with wisdom. Deuteronomy 20 and 18 says, 28 and 18 says, it is God that giveth us the power to get wealth or the idea to get wealth. Sometimes it's an idea that's left in the will. Because sometimes God, the, the, the father leave money like he did in St. Luke chapter 15 with the, with the boy who, who runs away from home, the prodigal son, and he takes the will and everything that's left in the will and he spends it on riotous living, people using him. And he did it only for at the end of the day to not have anything left. That's material. But then the father walked him home, let him come back, and gave him something that he couldn't give him at first. Eternal life. I'm offering something to you that's in God's will that will start a covenant relationship between you and God. That will start you down a road that will bless you, not only your life in time, but your life in eternity. It's a life that never ends. That's the ultimate will for your life. I want to pray for you today that you would make a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. And let's build a relationship with God, a never-ending relationship that will get you from time to eternity. One straight, non-stop flight straight into eternity. What a life to live. If I'm talking to you, I'm going to pray this prayer with you. And I want you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my soul. I believe that you're the Son of God. And I believe that you died for my sins. You stayed in the grave for three days. And you rose with all power in your hand. I believe your father raised you from the dead. 
Now live in me and be the Lord of my life. And I'll serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Father, I pray now for that person who prayed that prayer. I pray for the baptism of the Holy Ghost that they receive it now that will build a relationship that will cause them to hear your voice and to know your will for their lives. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and I thank God for you. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to put it on the screen. I got saved. I want to offer you an invitation to join our cyber sanctuary, to be a member of our cyber church. Man, thank you, Jesus. My God, thank you, Jesus. He that can have God. Put that on the screen. We want to know. We want to know you got saved. We want you to join the Cyber Sanctuary for Church of the Harvest International everywhere. I want to be your pastor. I want to teach you. I want to help you. As we both journey from time to eternity. I'm not just taking a trip, but I'm going to enjoy the journey. And let's do it together. Come on, give God a hand and praise everybody. Clap your hands. Come on. Clap your hands, everybody. Come on, keep clapping. It. Clap those hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. And give God a praise and thanking God for Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Clap those hands and give God a praise. Listen, I want to share this with you. Um, we're about to give, and uh, we're about to give, and I want you to uh, help me now to give at this particular time, and we thank you for this opportunity. I want you to begin to give now. Now, listen, we've done so much, and y'all know I, I've talked to you about this over and over again, about everything that God has done for us as a church, and man... It's amazing. Now we're in another process. Now we're in a cleaning process. Yes. And the Elder Gail is going to be contacting individuals concerning the cleaning of our church as we prepare to move chairs into the sanctuary, hook up sound. We bought new lights. We bought new lights the other day. And uh, thank you, Adam. Adam traveled all the way to Kentucky and picked up the lights, the new lights for the sanctuary. Adam, thank you, Adam, for making that journey to pick up those new lights. We have stage lighting. This church is going to be more than, it's going to exceed our expectation. It's going to be more than you ever thought would ever be. That's where we are now. It's going to be second to nothing. We are building a temple for the living God. And I thank God for that. And I want you to know that none of this stuff is free. Everything costs. And uh, I'm not going to beg people. To, to, to do anything, I'm going to ask you to do it, <clears throat> but I'm not going to beg you because if you're a member of Church of the Harvest, you should know what your responsibilities are. And I appreciate you sharing with us and helping us to do everything that you can do to help Church of the Harvest be the place that it should be. I'm not building a church for myself. I don't, I don't live at church. I live at home. I'm building a temple for the Lord Jesus Christ that we can worship him in the beauty of holiness. That's why we're doing it. I need you today to get your tithe and get your offering in your hand. Listen to me. I want you to get your tithe, get your offering in your hand today, and I want you to liberally give today. Yes. If you believe in the ministry that God has given me, if you believe in the vision that God has given me for our church, then I want you to sow into the vision. I want you to sow into the purpose. Sow into what God is doing. Hear what Jesus said. Uh, Jesus said, if you don't want to believe I'm Jesus the Christ, he said, at least believe that that man was blind and now he can see. He said, you ain't got to believe me, but believe in the power of God. You ain't got to believe that Bishop Robeson is all that, but at least believe that everything that God said he would do for us, he has done it through us. You believe that much. Believe that God is using our pastor in this season. But let me tell you something. Without a vision, the people perish. But without people, the vision bears. And so we need each other to make this happen. So I need you to go to go to all of the giving mechanisms that are across the screen now. 
There are ways to get. You can get by Cash App. Glory to God. You can give by going to our church's website and you can give on there. You can give by Givelify. You can give on Givelify. And that's a blessing. All of these different ways to give. There's uh, give, Givelify. But you can also say to God, don't you know, in this season, my wife and I have to live as well. And so when you give into my cash app, there it is on the screen. I thank you for sowing into us. Some of y'all haven't sold into your pastor. And I appreciate if you would do that. That's a blessing to my wife and I. That means we can eat too. And, and, uh, and we thank you for your gift. So if you don't mind today, go to all of the giving mechanisms that are on the screen and so. I want to thank Sister Gail for meeting up with me the other day and putting a gift in my hand. And I want to thank her for just sowing into my life and all of you that sow into um, my life and my wife and our life. I want to say thank you publicly for the gifts that you give to us. We, we appreciate it. God knows we do. God knows we appreciate it. And we thank you for it. So continue to give and show your love. The Bible says in Galatians 6 and 6, let him that is taught in the word, that's you, communicate unto him that teaches in the word, that's me. That means it says, bless the one that teaches you. And we appreciate that. Sow your gift today at the Church of the Harvest and let's watch God take our ministry to a whole nother dimension. Do you believe it? I said, do you believe it? If you believe it, come on, take a moment and sow now. I'm going to give you one minute to start sowing. You can give now. You can sow now. You can sow now. If you don't have a cash app, you can literally call my wife. If you want to sow into my life, you can literally call my wife, not only by cash app, but you can call her and you can give uh, You can give by um, swipe. We can take your information and, and you can give directly. You can give directly into our account. Uh, Bishop Robeson's account with the swipe through credit card. You can give through credit card as well. Uh, we set that up now so you can give it to our credit card as well. And uh, that'll bless go straight into our account as well. I thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. I love you. Come on, take a moment and give that gift down. Give that gift down. Give it down. Come on. Give that gift down. Why you give it? Come on. We're almost done. We're almost done. Almost at the end of service. Uh, just a couple more minutes and we're out of here. It's a little over the time today. Praise this Lord. Come on. Give that speed. We're almost there. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Give that seed. Go to the church's site. Giblify. Church's cash app. Bishop cash app. Come on. So you see. Hope you enjoyed the word today. That's right. So that me. We know God to bless your life. You got the numbers. Call Tamara. Call my wife. Call Brother Ray. We're ready to receive your gifts. You know how to do it. God is waiting to bless you. This is your day to receive be blessed. Your life will never be the same again. All you have to do is something. What's up, man? So it. That shall they also be. In the name of Jesus. So that seed. Well, did you give? If you gave, clap your hands and give God praise. Let's go home. Well, we're already at home. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. It's a beautiful day outside. This is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad. And they call some of the saints. Check on the saints today. 
see how they doing. I'm Bishop Neil Rose. Honey, come up here, wave at the people before we go. Y'all ain't seen the queen in a little while. She she been working. She ain't working. I'm about to put Tamra on the screen. Tamra ain't been on here in a while either. Greet the people, baby girl. Hello, everybody. Blessings. I pray that you all have a wonderful, wonderful service with us. And we thank you so much. I love each and every one of you. And may God continue to bless you. Love you. Well, God bless you all. Thank you all. What a time, what a time. And we thank God for this time. Tamra, put Tamra on the screen. Turn around. Turn around. Do look close to the screen so she can say hello. Go on up to the screen, man. I'm going to stay right there for a minute. All right, Tamra. Greet everybody, wave at Can you see her? Make sure she can see her. Can y'all see her? Yep, she can see they see her. Can they see? Can you see yourself, Tam? <laughs> <laughs> Those are our texts. They working. She said, "Love you, miss y'all." Come on, step on back on this place. She's uh, she's yeah, she's on the screen. She's in a whole nother place. <laughs> she's uh, look at her. She's waving. <laughs> ah man, it takes a uh, it takes a. Uh, a uh, plethora of people to make things happen. I want to thank God for all the texts that are working uh, to make things happen. God bless you all. It's been a great day today. Don't forget, God's will is for you. God wants you to know his will for your life. Well, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you now for who you are. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy toward all of us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the soul that were added to the kingdom. And bless us in the name of Jesus. I pray that's this altered father. And not one home will go back because of what we've done in the temple on today. We bless the offering. Restore it back 100 fold. Bless all of your people, God. I pray that the house of God will be blessed as we learn the will of God for our lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I give you glory for it. In the name that is above every name, in Jesus' name I pray and I thank you for it. Amen. Well, somebody give God praise. It's a great day. I love you guys. I want to play a song for you before you go today. I want to play another song for you before you go today. That's one song. We're ready to go home. But there's a song I want to... Um, the other song I wanted to play for you on today before we get out of here. I fell in love with this song. It's a good old church song, and uh, I wanted to play it for you. It's a church medley, and hopefully it's a blessing. Feel like having a little. Come on, come on. This is for y'all. Well, in the name of that didn't work out. That didn't work. Out. Um, that didn't work out. Oh, that didn't work out good. <laughs> well, here it is. Here it is. It's a song I just. <laughs> oh, boy. Here it is. We're going home. We're going home on this song. Yes, I close the song.